Hello, so in this tutorial what we're going to do is start lighting this scene. Now, uh, what I've done is I've bought in the uh, nodes that we're using to create our environmental light and I have a tutorial which I'm going to link you to which covers how to create this in more detail, okay? But basically, just to recap, what we're doing is taking these pictures of the chrome ball. There's two pictures of a chrome ball, okay? They're HDRI images, okay? So I've, put the, I've basically put the chrome ball... Um, in our scene about where I've about the same position that I actually I've I've put the chair so I've taken I've put a chrome ball there photographed it from 90 degrees apart and I photographed it at different exposures using bracketing okay and then all I've done is basically just crop and merge those images using Photoshop again that's all covered in the tutorial and then use these nodes to combine these two images to sort of unfold these images and combine them so that we end up with uh, this OK, now the key thing is that we're using this to light our scene. So this is actually being used as a light source to light our scene. OK, so in order to use this as a light source, what we want to do is use an environment, an environment uh, uh, node here. OK, uh, and then what I can do is plug in our uh, image, sorry, our map into our environment. OK, and then I'm going to add that light. That's now a light that I can then add to my scene. So I'm probably just going to move that down to here a little bit just to make things work a little bit better. OK. Again, go, go to my scanline renderer and attach that to my viewing node. And you can now see that we've actually got some light in our scene. I'm just going to move this viewer here just to make things a little bit easier to look at. So we've now got uh, some light here. Now what I can do is go back into my uh, materials here and start adjusting these materials. So if I go into, I'm trying to remember which model is which. If I disconnect this, okay, so this is the top. So what I might do is I'm just going to label this. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, I was going to try and label it. Here we go. Oh, in fact, I can just label it here, can't I? Um, uh, I'll call it uh, top. I suppose I could call it upholstery. And then this is the chair legs, this one here. So I'm going to click on this one and just call this one. Sorry, legs. Okay, just allows me to know uh, what part uh, is what. Okay, so now with the top, what I want to do is just simply give this. I, I want to try and give this sort of a brown color, and I sort of found the easiest way to do that was really to kind of look at the diffuse material. Okay, and kind of click on. If I click on the this here, this gives me a pipette, and I can kind of go onto this sort of brown color here and select that. At least that's what I was hoping was going to happen. Okay, I've uh, managed to figure out what I was doing wrong. And what I was doing wrong was, uh, so I can click on this, uh, and then to pick a colour from my scene, I need to go control click. This is one of those little things that I kind of uh, uh, forget. Control pick a colour from our scene. So you can see that we, we're, we're then defining uh, the colour of our material, okay? to be uh, uh, as as follows, okay? So that's giving our, our, our material a sort of a brown color, okay? Then what we want to do is kind of up the diffuse uh, diffusion a bit. Let's have a look. Am I updating this? Okay, so I think before we start sort of refining the material and our fong, what we need to do is actually add a spotlight to our scene. So I'm just going to do that. Um, what I've done is I've turned up the environmental light here and turned it up to an intensity. I want to really kind of get it towards about 20 feels about right, okay? But just getting an idea just from what it looks like in the scene, what intensity we should be uh, putting that environmental light at. The other thing I wanted to show you as well is in our 3D scene, uh, the environmental light started off, so you you should start off with, envir with an environmental light that's quite small. Oh, hang on. Try not to swap this over. That's quite small and is actually uh, on the ground, so it's not necessarily lighting up the chair properly. Uh, so what you might want to do is just lift it up, and then what you want to do is is actually just scale this environmental light up a little bit. It usually comes in quite small, and I usually scale it up a little bit. Okay. 
Now, depending on what you're lighting up in 3D, what you can also do is also rotate the environmental light as well um, to line up the reflection that you get from the from the chair. So, um, uh, again, if I go to my 2D view, uh, you you would see that if I actually manipulated that light. In fact, there we go. Hang on. Control Z. just not letting me actually move move it in the axis that I want hang on okay uh, might have to just choose a different oh. if I if I move it in a different axis you'll get the idea so as I move it around you see we get different light reflecting on here okay and that's because we move the environment around okay obviously I don't want I want the environment light to be flat um, uh, but I can also just check. You know, there might be specific things I want reflecting from this uh, from this chair. So I can rotate this accordingly if I want to. What I'd need to do is is I could just uh, do a two up view here again uh, with my viewer. Again, just put this on the side here. And then, oh, hang on. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just dock it. I should be able to, it's going to let me dock it. No, it doesn't want to let me dock it. Let's try again. Sometimes it lets me uh, dock it on the half here, but it's not letting me do that. So I'm just going to put it here. So I'm just putting it in my other desktop that you can't see. And I'm going to bring it back in. So just give me a moment. Here we go. There we go, okay. Uh, and then I can obviously just grab this and then I can rotate it, okay. And then hopefully that, now now I can actually rotate it. Not sure why it wouldn't let me rotate it in that other view. But anyway, the idea is you can see that by rotating it, I can get slightly different reflections in here. So what I might want to do is just line this up to get, you know, if there's a particular reflection that I'm after. At the moment, it's just acting as a general environment light, so that's working quite well, okay. But the idea is that, in this object, I'm getting the reflections of the light that was actually in the room. Okay, uh, so it kind of gives me a more sort of realistic effect. Uh, again, here we go. Yeah. What I might also do is just see if I adjust this downwards, what effect that has. Yeah, because it makes the top quite dark, and that's not really what I wanted. So I think I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's so that's the setup of my environmental light. Now what I'm going to do is add a spotlight into this. Okay, so here's our spotlight. Let's add this into our scene. Again, uh, I've got my 3D viewer here, so that's going to help me out. I can just use this 3D view view that I've got here, just to kind of position the spotlight in the correct place. Here we go, over our scene. You can see it's kind of indicating the direction that the spot is actually shining out in. It might be helpful just to take the environmental light out for the moment. Uh, I think that's working, is that right? Okay. Uh, my plan was if I took the environmental light out, I could see what the spot was actually lighting up, but that doesn't seem to be, uh, let me just click on, doesn't seem to be refreshing this view, so, that hasn't worked. Okay, so what we can do is just go based on the direction of uh, these arrows here, or this is this is where the spotlight's coming out. You can see which direction the spotlight's coming out. So I'm just going to go and rotate this so that the actual spot is actually pointing at the chair. Okay, excellent. Okay, you can see it there on the chair itself. I probably need to pull this out really to kind of properly uh, light up the whole chair. OK, uh, now this is also going to govern our shadow, this spotlight. So uh, what we want to do is uh, actually, oh, hang on, I've no idea where. OK, there we go. Uh, moved it a bit too close to the camera there, I think is what happened. Uh, again, I want to move the spotlight. One of the decisions I want to make is where this spotlight is going to cast a shadow. So I'm thinking I kind of want it to kind of cast a shadow about here. 
from this sort of direction and then I can then rotate it accordingly okay so if I just rotate that I'm just pulling this out just to make sure it does light up the whole sort of chair here okay and you can see it's nearly there but we just need to it's not quite rotating let's have a look Again, let's look at our rotation here. I think I could rotate it a bit more this way. Yeah, that's definitely helped. And a little bit more further up. Oh, no. I think that's all right. And we can come back and refine this when we're trying to do our shadows. So I think that that's kind of got it. Okay. Okay, so we've got our environmental light and we've got our, our spotlight on there as well. And again, I can adjust the intensity of the spotlight if I want to as well. Okay, so that's just lit by our environment light and then that's also lit by our spotlight. So I can kind of adjust the intensity of that as I need to. Okay, now what I want to do is have a look at our uh, fong materials. Okay, now what I'll do, yeah, so I'm looking at my Fong materials here. This is the, so I'm just going to close down some of these uh, panels that I've got open here because I think that's just confusing the situation. Here we go. Okay, uh, so again, just looking at the Fong material here, um, what I can do is, uh, it works similar to a Fong shader in Maya. So I can just select my material, my color here. So I can give, I can give it kind of a base color. And that's the best way to kind of work with it is to give it a base color and then decide um, how much specular and diffuse light there is. So obviously the specular light is the light that's shining, is the, the shiny glossy areas that's that's shining back uh, directly, uh, directly, you know, is, is directly reflecting back in your eyes. And then the diffuse light is the light that's when it hits the chair, it scatters in all direction. OK, so. Uh, this has got quite a lot of specular light at the moment, and so you want to, if you turn that right down, you can see that it becomes completely diffuse, and there's no kind of specular highlight. Okay. Uh, similarly, if I turn down diffuse, you probably won't really notice it because the the specular is so so high. But if you turn down the diffuse, uh, it is made up purely of the shiny bits. Okay. So it's trying to get the sort of uh, the balance of that as it were okay so what I want to do is I think and also I think I'm just going to turn down my maximum sort of shininess and my minimum shininess a little bit as well just to kind of make it a little bit better okay so you can see that the color of my chair is kind of coming in here a little bit more okay and I just selected that I went I all I did to select the color was I clicked on there and then control clicked on the color. I just picked out a color from this 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 uh, bag here, and I thought I'd use that as a sort of base color for what we're doing here. In fact, let's just do that again because that's rather dark. Well, that might work. I turn up my diffuse. Okay, so you can see I've got a kind of sort of a brownie sort of color there. Okay, but I could get in and sort of fettle those in a lot more detail. Uh, uh, later on okay let's do our chair so obviously the chair leg is going to be um, the fong material for our chair leg is going to be uh, uh, very shiny with very almost basically no diffuse light on it at all okay uh, it's going to be very shiny so let's let's turn that up in fact might just turn down the shininess, the specular light a little bit because I think that was a little bit too harsh and then perhaps we can have yeah and this just allows us to sort of map the maximum minimum shininess but I think I'm quite happy with that as a, as a, as a kind of initial result so that's the material on our on our chair okay um, now what I want to do is I want this spotlight to cast a shadow. So in order to do that, I've got to put a card into our scene. So I'm going to add a card in there. Um, uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will do this 
that part in a, another tutorial. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is add a card to our scene and then use that card to create a shadow.